Alright, in this video I'm going to show you how to make an older laptop run cooler. Uh, what we're going to do is we are going to replace the thermal paste on the CPU and GPU if you have a dedicated graphics card. And we are also going to thoroughly clean it. I use a data vac. Um, you can use canned air if you want. This is a little bit more powerful and obviously it never runs out because it's just electric. Uh, the first thing you're going to want to do, we're going to be disassembling the laptop. So, of course, the first thing to do is take out the battery. Just set it to the side. Okay. And you can take out other things if, you, if you're just interested, but we're just going to dig right in here. It will be slightly different on each model, but for the most part, many of them have a small bezel here covering the screws for the keyboard. Uh, some have screws underneath the keyboard from the bottom, so that's going to be model specific, but uh, many Dells and Toshibas have this configuration, so I'm going to use this Toshiba. Okay, this piece will just pop off. I'm using a right angled pick, not sure if you can see it. I'm using a right angled pick. Some laptops will have two, some laptops will have three. In this case, there are two, and then there are just some small uh, kind of uh, clips that you can just take off. Just like that. Under this panel, you'll find the keyboard connector. Most laptops actually don't have this keyboard connector. I mean, don't have this little panel covering the keyboard connector. Uh, you'll just be able to see the keyboard. Um, the next thing you're going to see in here, hoping you can see it in the video, is a little ZIF type connector like this. Okay, so identify that. And we're, what we're going to do is release the mechanism and remove the keyboard. Now, this connector will be slightly different uh, from model to model. However, for this one, what we're going to do is just pull down on these little ground tabs at the edges of the connector. Okay? Some are some you pull up, some you pull out. This one you just pull out and comes right out. Okay, under this panel, we find the RAM. I'll go ahead and just remove this so you can see. good time to do a RAM upgrade um, if you're planning on doing one anyway, but uh, here's where you find the RAM. Alright, while you've got this area open, you can go ahead and remove these three screws. Now this is where the screws start being different sizes, so just note where you remove them from. I've noticed that on many of the consumer line Dell units, all the screws will be pretty much a uniform size. So if you've got a Dell and you're doing this procedure, you probably won't have to worry as much. Um, but some do have slightly different sizes, so just make sure you are. Um, what I do is I keep them in a line on the side, like this, so I know where I've taken them out. Alright, now we start uh, actually taking apart the case. Uh, what you're going to want to do, or, or at least what I like to do first, is I like to remove the optical drive. Most laptops will have some sort of screw for releasing the optical drive. Uh, and you just do this, release it, and pull out. Okay, now we can go ahead and start taking apart the case. Uh, what you're going to notice on most laptops is just around the outer edge, there will be screws. Okay, So just start at one edge and remove the screws connecting the bottom case to the top case. Now you'll notice that many of these have slightly different lengths. 
you can see that. So I would recommend keeping them in the order that you remove them and remembering the starting point. So. And there will usually be one or two screws in the middle area that also connect to the underneath the keyboard uh, for that base. We see one right here. Okay. Okay, at this point, it may be a good idea to look underneath covers. Uh, I know on some ThinkPads, uh, some of the important screws to take everything apart are underneath covers. So go ahead and remove your bottom covers. Usually one is a network card uh, and one is the hard drive. Okay, uh, yeah, so this one's a network card. And then the other one is a hard drive. Now when we look in here, we just see that there are the two screws holding the network card in, so that's fine. You don't need to take that apart. Um, so I've got a solid state drive in mine. You can go ahead and remove it. And there are no screws under here that are relevant. So at this point, you can go ahead, flip it over. Now, some, uh, some models will require that you take off the LCD to get to the CPU, and some will not. So that really just depends on your model. So for this one, I'm going to go ahead and just loosen up the LCD so that I can remove the palm rest. On these convertible um, tablets, usually there's just a little um, piece that you can pop off, and then you'll have access two screws And be sure you're supporting the LCD while you're messing with the hinges, obviously. Okay. Now that I've got it loosened, I'm going to go ahead and gently open it up. Okay, and as you'll notice, what we can do is just pull up on the palm rest area and separate it. Um, just find a good spot. You can kind of feel it come apart, just like this pry up around the edges. Uh, it works best if you can have something behind the LCD supporting it, just so that you can easily pry everything up without having to worry about it falling down and cracking any pieces. Okay, So just go ahead and pry up around the edges, get it all, uh, get the palm rest loose. Okay, so once you have everything loosened up on the edges, uh, most laptops, the palm rest will just come off. Many, many just normal Toshiba laptops, uh, this area will just come right off. On these convertible tablets, there are some connections that are still connected to this piece that we need to go ahead and get rid of. Now, they have this uh, little protective kind of shield here that you can take a pick or a screwdriver and go ahead and just peel it off. And this is going to give us access to the pieces underneath. 
go ahead and put that to the side somewhere safe so that we can take it back on later. And we're going to get, go ahead and uh, undo the pieces still connected. So once we have everything disconnected, this piece will lift right off. Okay, if your uh, computer has a wireless card in it, you're going to need to remove this piece as well um, from right in here. And just pop off the wireless connections. They just pop straight up like this. So you'll need to remove, remove to in total you'll need to remove the wireless and then these two, these two, and then this part as well needs to be removed. loosen it back up. Okay, so you can use a pick to just go around the edges and pop everything up, and then this will lift right off. Okay? So now we are finally into the area that we need to be in um, to do the first step, which is just cleaning out this fan. Uh, now some manufacturers will use a higher grade copper heat sink while others will use this aluminum. You can tell if it's silver, it's probably aluminum. Uh, if it's copper, it's going to be copper colored, obviously. So go ahead and just blow out this fan, and that's the first step of what we're going to do. Okay, I've gone ahead and blown out the fan. Wow, once you get that dust free, um, that's a really going to be a really big improvement for how well your computer runs uh, as far as temperatures go. Now, on this model, unfortunately, the heat sink for the uh, CPU is on the underside of the motherboard. It's not a big deal. We're still going to go ahead and uh, replace the thermal paste, but a lot of computers will have it uh, to where it's just on the top side, so you don't have to take the motherboard out of the casing. But to get to this one, we're going to have to remove the motherboard. So what we're going to want to do is remove the motherboard placement screws. So th these are screws like these that you see just holding the motherboard down to this bottom casing. So go ahead and remove those screws and we'll go from there. Okay, if you're following along for this model specifically, there were three of these screws that I had to remove. Uh, those are right here, here, and um, right there. Uh, and then there are two of these silver screws right here, and then also obviously remove the fan screws. And that's all that's needed to get this one out of base. So we've already got it broken down so much. Okay. Go ahead and remove the base, flip this over. Now it's a really good idea if you're doing, the, if you're touching the motherboard itself to have some sort of uh, anti-static wrist, wristband that they sell. Uh, I don't have one. Uh, this computer is basically worthless anyway, so I'm just going to do it like this. Um, but it's a good idea to have a nice grounded surface so you don't send any static shocks through the system. Now we are finally at our goal here of getting to the CPU that you'll see right here. If you have a discrete graphics card, usually the way it works is you'll have this heat pipe that goes to the CPU, and there will also be a, a joining heat pipe that touches the GPU as well. Um, it's not the case on this one because this has integrated graphics, but just note that if you have a discrete card, you'll have to remove uh, the heatsink from another chip as well and do the same process. What we're going to go and do is just take out these three screws holding the heat sink down to the processor and then just lift up okay. and on some of these as you see here uh, well obviously all of them will have the fan connected um, 
usually the fans are joined to the heat sink. It's not the case on this model. Um, but now what we want to do is take some rubbing alcohol and clean off this surface and clean off the surface of the CPU. Go ahead and do that. Or I've gone ahead and cleaned it off. Uh, if you're not clear on what rubbing alcohol is, you could just get it at Walmart uh, or any drugstore. Um, usually just get like a bottle for like a dollar or something. Uh, anyway, just make sure it's nice and clean. Just get a paper towel and clean it off. Then we're going to use some uh, better thermal paste. If you'll notice, the stuff that came off of here was white. Um, it's a really cheap thermal paste. What we need is some better quality stuff. Kind of the go-to brand uh, is Arctic Silver 5. I don't have any of that right now. I've just got some of this that came in it with another computer. Um, so I'm going to use it, but any, pretty much anything is better than the stock stuff. So go ahead. You don't need a whole lot, and you don't want to put on enough so that it um, so that it spreads everywhere. This is actually probably a little bit too much even. Um, but just get enough on so that when this goes down on top of the die, uh, it spreads, uh, spreads through the whole thing. All right, so now your temperatures aren't going to immediately go down. Uh, you need to kind of stress the CPU a little bit so that this thermal paste heats up and then it, uh, what, what's called sets, it, it sets, uh, and then you'll see the full gain of what we've just done. Uh, after this, really, uh, just put your laptop back together and you should be good to go. Uh, if your laptop has a lot of extra space in the case, what I've seen a lot of people do is use thermal adhesive, which is different than thermal paste and use thermal adhesive to adhere pennies uh, or other copper shims along these heat pipes and that helps with heat dissipation. Uh, so if your laptop is really overheating or you've got a discrete card, as long as you've got enough space in your case, you can mount some extra copper on there and definitely see an improvement in cooling. So I'm going to go ahead and just put this back together uh, and should be good to go. The fan should run less uh, and the processor should run cooler. One quick note while you're putting this back together, um, just note that the CMOS battery goes in this little kind of compartment up here. So that's where it goes. Don't try and cram it in next to the fan. Uh, just make sure it gets back in the right spot. And then down here, uh, th this needs to be kind of lined up, but don't let it sit outside of the base. Make sure it's inside the base, or when you go to put it together, you'll have some issues. When putting this base back together, I realized that when I took the screws out, I mentioned that the screw came from this hole. It does not come from this hole, it actually comes from this hole. So make sure you're putting them back in the right spot, or else you're going to run into difficulties later when you're reassembling everything. Okay. Once you get everything back to this point, uh, what I do to get these sticky things back on is just use my pick and run it along the edge. You can use a flathead screwdriver also, and that just ensures that you get a nice contact. When you're putting this back together, if you have this model, uh, don't forget you've got two of these small ones, two larger ones, uh, one underneath this one, and then this cable as well needs to go back in. Okay? You've also got the touchpad right here. Alright, so uh, one more tricky part about putting this back together is the keyboard um, zip connect connector. It's a little bit different than a normal one in that you have to uh, bend it back like this and then push down on it so that it goes into the palm rest. Most of them you don't have to do that, but on this model you do, so just pointing that out. 